Welcome back to the garage, guys. Well, we're back on the XL table again. Uh, since we cut off last time, we took a few minutes and we got the table painted up. We decided to go with red and black. We think it looks pretty sharp. Uh, we didn't paint the top rails. Uh, we'll get to that here in the future once we get a few things mounted to it. So in today's video, what are we going to cover? We're going to cover the mounting the X gantry. We're going to put the X axis on, the Z axis on. We're going to hook up the motors, run the belts and we're gonna be jogging the machine by the end of the video. And uh, one of the first things we're gonna get to is a big mistake that everybody does on the standard version. We're gonna cover that. We're gonna cover that on the XL and we're gonna show you what needs to be done. So what we need to do guys is we need to set the angle of this gantry support. It'd be the same thing on the, on the standard version is the angle of your X arm. If it's pointing down, pointing up, not pointing in the right direction, we need to level that thing. So we're gonna cover that today. So on this one, we need to have, we're using a straight edge, we could use the gantry, but it's gonna be easier for the video. So they need to be parallel along here with the straight edge from side to side. And if Jackson comes and zooms in, we're gonna see that we're really not very parallel. So I got the straight edge up here. And if we can see, we've got a little bit of a gap there, touching here, but we've got a gap. If I measure that with a feeler gauge, I got two of them there, it's amounting to about 1.1 millimeters. So we've got to make that level so when we bolt on the gantry, it's not putting stress on the bearings. So what a lot of people have done in the original plan to level their X-axis arm, they start adjusting the set screws on the bearings. That's completely the wrong situation. These set screws are supposed to be adjusted so you get a nice smooth run and no play, no slot. In order to get this level, we're going to loosen these four bolts and rock the center tube. These bearing blocks won't move, only this will. So we're gonna get these loosened up and we'll rock this into place. It's probably gonna take uh, two people to get this done. So Jackson will come around and give me a hand with this. So I got them loosened up, guys. What I did is I loosened these three quite a bit and the same corresponding three on the back side. The fourth bolt, I just cracked so I can loot. So I got a little bit of tension on that fourth bolt. It's gonna allow me to rock this at a pivot point on this bolt back here. So I'm gonna try rock it into place and see how I come out. Um, coming up, I got a little better. I got the smallest feeler gauge here and still comes through. I got a little bit of a burr back here, so I'm gonna move my gauge there. And it's, I don't know what that is. Maybe you can see it on the camera. It's tiny, but I'm getting a lot more level on there, on that thing. I'm gonna set this down, give it a little bit of a rock. And look at that. Tight as a, doesn't fit in anywhere. Got it perfect, so I'm just gonna try and snug these up. What's the chances, Jackson? Think we got lucky? Probably not. Uh, take a look here. I got it. Well, it looks pretty good to me. There, put it, get that off of there, and I'm pretty good till just right there, just a little bit, but I think we're gonna call that good enough. Um, Jackson, you wanna take a look at the other side and see how much we've got to adjust it over there. That side's looking a lot better. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 I can't get it underneath of the, maybe just a little bit on this edge, but yeah, it's pretty tight. Yeah. Right, that, that little bit of pressure is not gonna not gonna mount to anything on these bearing blocks. But guys, that's how you level your x-axis. And if you need to, you know, drill out those three holes a little bit, uh, it's perfectly fine on the other version if you drill them out a little to get a rock. But only do it on three holes, don't do it on four. So probably one of the most difficult things about assembling the XL is making sure these tubes are parallel. We took a long time squaring this up when we did these corner reinforcements. So we're gonna take a look at this now. We're gonna measure across here. We're gonna 
come to the end here, Jackson, take a look what we got. Where are we at? 62 and a quarter, or maybe just a line, I mean, just a, the width of a line over a quarter. Something like that. So, yeah. so you're moving down to the other end. Okay. Oh. Now let's see where we're at, Jackson. So, 62 and just, I mean, can you tell any difference? No. Yeah, so we did a real good job. We took time making sure this is square. If you're out of whack a little bit, we're gonna show you uh, when we mount the uh, gantry and with the auto squaring that that should comp self compensate. So we went ahead and we got our X axis rail and we drilled the two holes in it. And you saw our measurements between our uh, two upper Y rails and our measurements are exact or just about exact. So. We were able just to drill a hole on a hole. So if your measurements aren't exact, you may have to slot the hole on the slave side, you know, that way or possibly this way, depending upon if your measurements narrower on this side or wider on this side versus the other end. But you wanna try to get these really close. You don't want the hole to get slotted this way or this way, that's bad. Cause that's not gonna keep your frame square. If you have a little bit of a slot this way or a little bit of a slot that way, that should be fine with the machine, uh, especially with the auto squaring that we're going to be getting into. So we're going to go ahead and get this uh, x-axis rail mounted up. We're going to put the x-axis on here and uh, we're going to move forward with assembling the x-gantry and, and start getting the motors put on. Well, we've got our motor cables, our motor's ready to go, so we took a few minutes and we cut the leads on the motors very short and we spliced um, the shielded cable on and then we spliced another uh, wire onto the drain wire so we could ground it out on the motor. So we've got this done. Uh, we've got a, got a Y-axis motor plate sitting here. We're gonna get that built up and we're gonna get the Y-axis motors mounted, the Z-axis mounted, and the X-axis mounted. One of the upgrades with the XL is this uh, bearing capture here. So it's an additional support to keep the uh, the two bolts here from twisting and being pulled by the belt. With the longer lengths of belts, we need to put a little more tension on the belt. And we were getting a little flex in these, so we've added the 3D printed support. It works very well to keep that flex out of there. The other additional change here is we're using a high grip belt. So this belt grips this pulley much better. Using this high grip belt, we're getting about 25% more force on this motor before it slips. And actually, it actually stalls the motor. Using the standard belt, we actually get belt slip before it stalls the motor. So we're getting about 25% more torque out of the setup using this uh, anti-slip belt. 
So a little bit about the Z-axis on this. The, this Z-axis has twice the travel that our uh, original design has. One of the reasons is we've raised the X gantry tube. We did that to allow for better access in and out of the machine with bigger sheets of metal. Uh, so we needed more travel. We actually made this easier to 3D print, easier to insert the linear bearings into. We've added linear bearings in here. Uh, it's a lot more robust system than on the than on the smaller unit. And when the for the Z axis plate, we actually put a bend line in it and bent a little protector down here. We had a few reports from people cutting uh, real thick metal, half inch, three quarters inch metal and getting a little deformation on that plate due to all the heat coming off the metal. So put just a little heat shield on there. It was real simple to do. So we've got still got the floating Z, still floats. We got our Z trigger switch and we have our limit switch uh, on here for the Z that will trigger out at the top. And uh, we'll get into how that's used uh, later on. Now that we've got the two Y motors mounted, we've got the X motor mounted, we got the Z motor mounted. We're gonna take a few minutes, we're gonna step back and we're gonna build the control box and then we'll get this thing uh, moving here shortly. Well, we got the control panel built. We wanted to give you a good view of this before we install it in the box. We also wanted to test it. Um, we've got the new uh, ESP32 controller that we've started to switch our units over to. Uh, we've updated all the drivers uh, for a more powerful, uh, better profile driver. And we've gone to a higher voltage power supply that's gonna give us a tremendous uh, increase in motor output uh, compared to the current setup on the Gen 2 model. So those upgrades we have going on in the machine, we also have an opto isolation bank. Uh, we'll get into that in a future video, what that's for, but hook this up and we're going to do testing. We're going to test the motors, make sure they're working before we drop it all in the box and have to make a wiring change because we have something plugged in wrong. So we'll get that going now. We decided to run a little test here. We hooked up this Y motor to the old controller with the uh, lower voltage power supply and the old style driver. And so we're just gonna get a baseline on what the pull is. I know it's kind of unscientific, but we're gonna pull this with a, with a fish scale and see what we come up to. So Jackson, if we can take a look here. So, okay, go back. Okay, uh, hit it again. Okay, go back, hit it again. We're getting a max force of about right there. I have to look at the scale, see what it says. about seven pounds or eight pounds max force with this setup. Here's the new setup. We're gonna pull this and just get a little bit of a force to see how it compares against the old setup. Probably right there on my finger. Yep, okay. Back it, back it off, Jackson. So we'll take a look here. That, that second test with the updated stuff was coming about up to here. Take a look here. Um, Probably right about 44 pounds is what we're getting with the updated voltage on the drivers or on the power supply and the new and the new driver. So significant increase on motors. Plus we're going from one to two 
on this gantry, so it's, it's really a powerful unit. Hey guys, we got this powered up. We're gonna do a little test here. This is kind of a test. Uh, don't try it at home, but we just want to show you the uh, the increased torque, unscientifically, the increased torque of uh, the motors with the higher voltage power supply and the improved drivers. So Jackson's gonna move move the gantry, and I'm gonna see if I can stop it. pretty good guys I'd like to thank everyone for sticking around to the end we wrote a script that's gonna sit and run for a couple hours and just make sure everything's working well on the machine so we're gonna fire that off and uh, we'd like to thank you guys for watching the end make sure to like and subscribe